As we enter the second round robin, teams get one more shot at taking down the league's best before we look at the playoff picture. Optic Gaming will hope to end the weekend 2-0 versus this absolutely terrifying Cloud9 squad who found some success with their rookie jungler Blabber just yesterday. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NALC's Countdown, where for 30 minutes we follow the trends of the league and talk about the MVP race until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champion Select. Medios is back. It's good to have you, my friend. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> All right, it's good to have you. And Kobe, you're sliding in as the third analyst on the desk. Dangerous position to be in, I'm well aware. <laughs> exactly that, but you I'm glad you're cautious. You, well, you died right the intro last time. You think I can make definitely it? go for personal best this time. There around. it is. Uh, he's already achieved that mark. All right, well, we're only a couple of months away from the summer finals where the NALCS champion will be crowned at the Oracle Arena. Make sure to pick up your tickets for Oakland now so you can see who North America sends to Worlds. Now, in the standings, there's a lot to absorb. 100 Thieves are on top, but then there are five teams tied for second with only one game separating the teams below that group. And listen, look, we've shown this a hundred times. I'm sure it makes as little sense to you as it does to me. So to help make things crystal clear, we've decided to present this artist rendition of the summer 2018 standing. Starting to make a lot more sense <laughs> to you guys now, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. So whoever is above them on the staircase is who uh, they, they're they underneath. Right, in yes. The, like who they lose to. Exactly. So you can clearly see. If you just follow the staircase right. around, you'll see that the teams above other teams I like that some of them the have two Sorry. different options right now of mm -hmm. which way they're going to go. And that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the point, Kobe. Thank you for pointing <laughs> that out. <laughs> All That's right. what I'm here for, okay. baby. Okay, well, while it's I'm here for the <laughs> obvious, the people who need the help. <laughs> while it feels like chaos <laughs> within the standings, there are some trends that I'd like to look at within the league, starting with Team Liquid. Again, our spring split champions, but who recently have been struggling quite a bit. And it feels kind of like a repeating story for some of these players. Impact is a guy who sometimes slumps in the middle of seasons before always seeming like a beast in the playoffs. And mm. this is the same thing that happened in spring where they started five and one or five and three, whatever it was in that one, before going back to 500. You know, sometimes I wonder if going to Rift Rivals affected their play at all because they did seem pretty good leading up to Rift Rivals. And I wonder if it was either by playing against European teams and realizing some weaknesses they've had, they've like, made some false corrections and tried to, you know, change things they didn't need to change, or maybe they just got overconfident from their success at Rift Rivals. So I'm wondering if that affected their play going forward at all. My criticism are a little bit more basic, like just the individual mistakes that we're now seeing from, you know, Ole and Impact especially. They're making a lot of just 1v1 errors and, and laning mistakes as well. So hopefully they can turn it around and have the playoff buff that you always talk about for uh, impact. Yeah, that's what I think will probably happen. I'm not super concerned for this team in the long run. I think if you're talking about like international performance, sure. But domestically, I think <laughs> I think they'll bounce back domestically. We're always concerned. Yeah, that's always true for every team. But uh, I think domestically, like come playoffs, I think this is a team that will have it mostly figured out. All right, so confidence that they'll pull it together by the end of the split. Another team, though, that was at the top of the standings end of spring, Echo Fox as well. Kind of a tumultuous last four games, splitting them two and two. I think this is a team that from Basically, the formation of this roster, everyone was a little concerned that the team could implode at some point due yep. to all of the very like aggressive personalities on the team. And some people are kind of wondering if that's going on right now. It seems like their team has been a little bit disjointed. Uh, their their plays just haven't really seemed very team-like. So, wondering if that's going on. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of crazy that our first two teams that we feel like have been trending downwards were considered the two strongest teams that we had in spring split. And we've kind of had a, a summer downturn for both of them. However, at least, you know, Dardock yesterday after their games, he recognized their mistakes and he was like, all right, we definitely tunnel vision. We chase too far. Me and Huni are being too aggressive right now. So, you know, maybe they can make those corrections. One thing to recognize the issue, another one to fix it. But that's sure. what we'll be looking for Echo Fox to do. I guess, you know, it, I, my question is, does this necessarily surprise you, though, when you look at the types of players that Echo Fox has? I'm looking at Huni in particular. This guy is an aggressive top laner. He's been known to die, even in some of his best performance forming splits, he'll still be kind of up there in terms of like solo deaths. Lucian Todd! Hootie's definitely the kind of player that, I, you know, I've played against him a lot and especially scrimming him, he's the kind of guy who, uh, he plays really aggressive in lane and if he gets ganked, it's just BG jungle difference. So um, mm. he's definitely a very aggressive player. He's good. I'm not trying to fault him by any means, but he does uh, like to get in there and hopefully his team has his back and when they don't, then uh, he doesn't look too good. I will say usually when he's kind of dying, he's usually at least getting something back. Like, oh, I had a 40 CS lead because I was playing so aggro. And it feels like in the past couple games, 
the aggression staying there, but there's not that kind of upside yeah, along with it. Yeah. Okay, interestingly. And enough. I think that if we look at their game yesterday, even Cooney didn't have a great game, but it's hard to fault him for the entire game because, like, a big reason that he started losing his advantage was Shen killing his bot lane 2v2, coming up top, blowing his flash, then killing his jungler. So it was like bot difference a little bit that game. Right, so. up to that point, he was playing, he and Dardock playing the way that they should have on the top side of the map. Because it got blown open on the bot side, he kind of, you know, the cascading effect into his own lane. Right, I also heard that Dardock spent uh, six hours yesterday after their game practicing canceling recalls with his trundle pillar. So he's not going <laughs> to miss another one today. All right, that's what I like to hear. Finally, let's talk about Golden Guardians again. Bottom of the standing spring split. So we're jumping to the opposite side of the bracket, but now they find themselves in contention for playoffs easily. A success story here. Golden Guardians uh, have done it in a way where they're really embracing a lot of the new champions too, right? The Heimerdinger, he definitely immediately went to the Heisendog and was like, teach me how to play this champion. Europe's playing it. We need to have it as a power in the bottom side. Then Mickey's also playing Smite mid with the Talon. They're roaming around there. They're really embracing kind of the strengths of those players, I think. And I like the, the teams that they were beating there. CLG, 100 Thieves, taking wins off very good teams. So it's not like this is a uptick because of strength of schedule or anything. Right, absolutely. And it is nice to see that with, you know, even though there are some still misgivings from individuals within all of their games, even looking at, you know, Mickey yesterday, we did, we, we kind of played on that idea of the coin flip. Mickey, overall, the idea that they're trying things and the willingness to jump on these new picks is probably, you know, a big catalyst for why they're finding so much success. I, I actually really like the success story of Golden Guardians because it's a team where if you look at the players, there's not any, like, super standout players as far as, like, you know, this guy's going to 1v9, maybe Mickey a little bit. But for the most part, you know, they've got lower low contracts, definitely Matt. You know, none of them are bad players, but... They're not like MVP candidates, right. but they've just been putting in a lot of work, working really well as a team. And I think it's begun to show like their their team play is very good. And I'm glad to see contracts, you know, doing well because I've always thought he's a very good player. Well, those are the trends as we've seen them through the first half of the split. We'll see how much more things change in our games today with our schedule presented by Jersey Mike Subs. First up, Optic Gaming faces Cloud9, followed by FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves Plus. Team Liquid versus CLG, where Freak, Golden Glue, Blabber, and Licorice will share their thoughts on the matchup from the NALCS Lounge on Riot Games 2. If the craving calls, order a sub above online at jerseymikes.com with the promo code JMNALCS to earn Hextech Chess and RP with the added chance of a free trip to the Summer Finals. We're going to hear from Captain Flowers and Zyrene about Game 1 in just a moment, but before that, Zabutin was asked, is there a chance that teams just play to shut down Power of Evil and beat Optic? Uh, this is something they can do, but that's not easy. You know, if it was like that, people would have beaten uh, SKT during the gold age of SKT quite easily. The thing is, killing the mid lane repeatedly allows, like, requir requires a lot of resources. So if you try and you fail, then your game is boomed. So you, you have to be very careful in these kind of strategies. We're open, like, to play against that, but I don't think it's, it's that easy to actually shut down a mid laner in, uh, in 2018. I'm really happy and very excited. First, because Blabber is playing. You know, he was like in, in my team at the scouting grounds. I was saying, oh, this guy is LCS ready. And now I'm facing against him. So I hope he will choke today. And he will have the worst match of, the, of his year against us in a way that we win because we need this point. Besides that, I'm very excited to play against C9. We, we really get along with them. They're good screen partners as well. And yeah, I wish the best to, to our opponents, but I, I feel pretty confident in the game today. Confidence from Zabutin saying we really want these points and normally Zyrene a battle at last place would have no more impact than just a small jump in the standings but because last place is only three wins away from first a win here means so much more. Yeah this is the most parity we've had ever in the NALCS halfway through the split and that means that these wins mean even more and it could really could come down to who can carry from each team right. Power of Evil in the mid lane has had amazing performances but the thing is is Transitioning those wins has been difficult for him, but also Licorice on the other side, exactly the same thing. He's gotten those leads, he's tried to carry the team. Yesterday, it worked out for both of these guys. POE carried on Victor, and Licorice carried on Poppy. But the question is, which one today is really gonna have that carry performance, and which team is gonna be able to rally around them and have them close out the game? A contest of those back muscles. Who's got the bigger carry ready to go in this game? Yesterday, Cloud9 picked up that win, and Ovali caught up with Reaper to find out the atmosphere around this C9 roster. 
Thanks, guys. Just got finished speaking with Reaper, who said that for the team, it's just good vibes throughout. They know that every single match is incredibly important if they want to make playoffs, but they actually already have their eyes set on Worlds. He said that he already looked at the schedule, and he's confident that there's no week that they can't 2-0. I also asked him a little bit about the sudden addition of Blabber and why it took so long to kind of bring him in. He said that Blabber was actually just a little too nervous to try out for the team, but coming into this week, he was ready. He said that Cloud9 has been playing a little bit scared recently, but Blabber is a great addition because he's already aggressive and ready to make all these big plays. As for their game against Optic today, he says, sure, they have a POE, but we got a Jensen. Back to you guys. Well, they're going to 2-0 every week <laughs> yeah. from here to the World Finals. Yeah. Uh, so He's looking at Worlds already! <laughs> what is he doing when he gets to best of fives and a 2-0 is not enough? I, yeah, right? I don't know. They I get out of 10th where... place for one day. And, and they're like, a lot of confidence. Worlds. I respect <laughs> it. I respect it. you got to believe in yourself. I mean, this is an org that's never missed it. So, you know, to some degree, there, you know, like it, it does to some degree make sense, especially if you're a Cloud9 fan. You do have to earn it. Of course, the work still has to be there. My goodness, confidence coming out of the Cloud9 camp. We're going to take a break. When we return, we weigh in on game one and give our thoughts on the midseason MVP. After today's games, though, Solo will be joining Freak and Zyrene for NALCS tonight, and we'll be putting his MS paint skills to the test. Help us decide what he draws by spamming chat during the break. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown, where the timer to my top right, there it is, yeah. indicates the start of Champion Select. And with half of the games in the split completed, I wanted to challenge my analysts by submitting their MVP ballots as if the split ended today. So we're going to throw those up on the screen, see where you guys threw your votes. <laughs> sneeze over there. A little sneeze, like, I little guys. sneeze, man. Come on, Mark. All right, first All right, here up, we, go. we got Mark Z's midseason MVP candidates. Someday, Doublelift, and Mickey. Are these in order here? From yeah, this is the, how I would have submitted them. Someday, I think, is second in kills uh, on the top place team. Has had a fantastic split, winning a lot of lanes, as well as having some big standout games for me. All right, next up, Kobe's pick. Someday, Doublelift, but Dardock slotting into that third position. As I think Dardock has looked so good this split. Super aggressive jungler. Yes. He has uh, chased a bit too deep in some of the games, and then they ha has cost them, but he has hard carried a lot of the Echo Fox. Oh, we got Meteos. Oh. And we have Meteos as well. So someday occupying the top slot for all three of you. Sneaky coming in second. We're going to oh. talk about that one in a moment. <laughs> I, I, know, I know you have thoughts and justification. I, I, I know he's your boy, dude, and but then, come on. And then contracts. So, but first, let's uh, let's break. We got some time to talk about each of these players. So I actually want to go back to someday. You, of course, threw out the stats that he is, uh, you know, second most kills on the, you know, top ranked team at the moment. But what it is, what is it about this player that that makes him so impactful at the moment. One thing that I find really, really good about Someday, you know, obviously I've played with him for one, so I know he's a great player. But another one is that he's not necessarily a player that just soaks all of the resources. And for me, a big part of what I view as a good player is players who can create advantages, who can be in, you know, disadvantageous situations and still come out ahead. And he creates a lot of pressure for his team. He does a lot with a little and just overall very solid player. I mean, yesterday being the focus of a lot of attention, but still coming out at 7-1-5 and five after all of that focus attention to the top way. Next up, Double If. This was a guy who was sitting in second position for both Kobe and Mark. And I know he's probably take a little bit of a nosedive in the last two games, uh, but that doesn't change how much work he was doing early on the split. He's obviously the primary carry threat on the team that finished uh, first last split and was at the top of the standings for the majority of the first half. So you got to give the credit where it's due. And especially like uh, Medios was talking about, in even in the games where they were losing and the team overall was behind, Doublelift was still performing well. And he's in a position where marksmen are hard to pull off when your team is behind, right? Because you have to worry about so many threats from the enemy team diving you. So I think he's done a really good job with that. Doublelift definitely was a player that was close for me to being one of the MVP candidates, but I do have to say that um, I don't think he's adapted that well to the bot lane changes. He's looked fairly shaky on those mages. And I think that, you know, Liquid could just go back to playing 80 carries and they do well. But I guess that's kind of like a weakness that I saw in Docking him a few points there. Next up, Dardock, another one of the Echo Fox players. He's been performing well. Kobe, talk about this guy. Yeah, I mean, as I talked about, this guy has had some of the highest highs of any jungler uh, in the entire split, right? He has also, uh, as we said, the double-edged sword strikes a few times, but I think that he's done a good job 
growing as a player over the over the years here and has improved in a lot of the areas where people were critical of. And this was one for me that was kind of my snub of like who I was debating on mm. who was going to be my third pick. I didn't end up going with him, but absolutely deserves the, the, the praise that he's been getting this year. Right. Instead, you went with Mickey. So why is it that you're looking at that Golden Guardians mid lane? This was definitely Darker. a bit of a narrative push, but you take the 10th place <laughs> team and you bring them all the way up to be tied with second currently. Like, that's a huge turnaround. He's the only roster change that's happened. I know everyone else is playing better. There's a lot going on here, and it's not just all Mickey. Did you flip a coin to decide on Mickey? Yeah, I was between yeah. Mickey and Dota. I came up heads. Here I put him up heads. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, with him. But while we talk about all these other players like Hooney, like Dardoch, people who can be over aggressive and get punished sometimes, he kind of falls into that role as well and is a huge factor for his team in their wins. Yeah, some of the losses, though, like the early games. Those of Lulu this games split. were. Yikes. But here's right. my question. As long as you How can that, you yeah. guys be picking people like Mickey and Dardock over Sneaky? I would love to hear this. Okay, well, listen. Our ears Cloud are primed and ready, my friend. Cloud9 has been a top team pretty much since it came into the league. And Sneaky's been there the entire time. That's He's true. a phenomenal player, very good teammate, like solid, like selfless. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened when they took him out. Cloud9 started one in five. He came back into the roster, a struggling roster that's been shifted so many times and immediately found success, even on some of these new picks like Swain. So I think it's hard not to vote for Sneaky. I think you're right that his absence proved his value, but he didn't actually contribute you know, like he was still one in five and he wasn't there for I'm that. I'm completely unbiased. You got to trust me. <laughs> okay, you're right. I'm sure I changed my vote. Um, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because uh, we were isolating those votes to the first nine games of the split. There are still nine more games to be played. So I'm sure that those votes would change as the split continues. We'll see which of those players can make their case for MVP as the split continues. Maybe the award will go to one of the pros in this week's Mic Check, which features FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. Let me uh, do this real I'm quick. Gonna the second that hot tea hit my stomach, <laughs> something exploded. One second. <laughs> my last cube. I'm next, I'm gonna need you to get in the lobby, all right? Yep, I'm Thank going. Thank you. You know what's actually gonna happen? We're just gonna get Zoe first pick. It's actually what's gonna happen. <laughs> nah, Seriously. After that Mickey game, they're gonna bend Zoe. Yeah, there's no way. Yo, they're scared. They're scared, Ole. Walk up, walk up. Just walk up a little bit. He's walking at me. Wow. Okay, they're mine. They're not scared. Holy, I my bad. Flash. Watch Q. Oh. oh, I die. Hey, they're coming. No, they're he did. He did. I think. I'm gonna hit this. Oh shit. Keep flash. All right, Zoe's over yeah. the wall. Yeah, yeah, I hit. The wall. yeah, he flashed down. He's good. Yeah, we're good. I can't. Yo, oh, that is, that is, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ulti. We got it. Okay, go. Nice. Okay, can you? Oh, yo, can you? Okay, okay, okay. Go, 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 you can't just stay back the whole time. Yo, can you can you combo? I'm going. Good stuff. Good stuff. Just back. I killed this guy. Oh, multing. He's dead. Uh, okay. Nice guys. Yo, Kindred wow, is top side. Nice. Okay, Kindred is top oh, side. Back, 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 back. Did he only get mid? Wow. Nice. Is he coming back? Yo, I'm slowly coming bot side, I'm following, I'm following, I'm following. We got him. We're running, we're running, we're running. Nice, guys. I'm following, I'm following, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry, guys. Player on me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, cross. Yeah, watch, 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 watch. Yeah, I'm here, man. Oh, you can kill, you can kill, you can kill. Yeah, you can kill. Guys, we have to, like, decide ASAP. Like, we can't just... Okay. Yeah, we need to do something. Look at this guy. I'm rotating. Pass in to me, pass in to me. Okay, I can't go, I can't go. Yo, yo, look, 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 look. I'm not taking it. Okay, okay, okay. uh, I'm tanking. I don't want to take it. Back, 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 back. I'm not taking it. It's okay. I'm not taking it. Just give Lucas. Give Lucas. Don't overcome no, it. Okay, okay, you're good. You're good. Oh, back, 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 back. I don't want to tank. I think fight. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, we can, you we can, we can, we can, we can, though. You can do no ult, I think. Right? I've ulted you. Ult, ult, one, ult, one, ult, one. Go for it, for it, for it. Watch Yasuo. Watch Yasuo. He's behind me. That guy's one shot. We can walk up. Hey, big one. Look, Yasuo's low. Ali, 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 Ali. We can fight, we can fight, we can fight. We can fight. Okay, back. I'm healing Jason. Nice. Yo, everybody. Nice. Let's go. It's, it's, <laughs> see, it was okay. great. They yeah. gave us Zoe. Honestly, uh, we both had double lift on there, Mark. But Yikes. after hearing him tell tell Ole to move up two times in lane, both times gets killed. I mean, that's why the criticism sometimes from the outside for the team's performances, you have to know what's going on, you know, in the communication within the team because it's not all Ole's fault.
Right. I think a lot of the times when you see a player make a mistake, that's just like, why would you do that? You're a professional player. Yeah. It's influenced a lot by like what's going on within their team. So that's big reason why, you know, Douglas didn't make my top three because mm -hmm. I think he's just not as proficient on Vladimir because he hasn't played it enough. I mean, that was a 19 to one kill game, absolutely decimated by FlyQuest. We got to move on. And while Jap might be MIA, that doesn't mean we can't have fun with some NALCS trivia in this edition of Kobe Stats. All right, my time now. Let's oh, get to- Do we dance? Their new song. Kobe. No. <laughs> oh, what is it's that? Kobe. No, Stats. it's called Kobe Facts. Well, they didn't ah. change the head. Uh, I really hoped that they were gonna yeah, change the head. Yeah, come on, blow Kobe's they didn't. face. At least hit him with the single. I did right. change the questions, though. All right, let's hear it. Question one. Question number one. Uh, since we have Medios on the desk, this had to be a KDA question. Okay. Uh, question number one, the jungler with the highest KDA in in the North American LCS right now. Oh, right now. Right now. All time though. 12.7 Medios. Wait. Could, up to right now. Oh, so, oh okay. Time. I was like in the summer <laughs> splitter all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm well, gonna go with this man on the desk right here. Well, he had 12.7, but then I don't know what your other splits were. Was there anyone who had like a one and done, like great split? Because like, why, why I say right now is it counts his 12 and one KDA, right? But isn't freeze for that season. Right, right? Like, right, it, right. it's his whole I'm, career. I'm going with Medios. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have faith with in, a shorter, in shorter career. I'm gonna say Rush, maybe. I, I don't know, but so have I'm some faith. Myself. Yes. Yeah, I believe you. So when we were doing this, uh, I thought that they were gonna put in the other possibilities. The it is Medios. There were more possibilities. Guess who number two is? Right behind Medios uh. is Santorin. Oh, oh Flyquest oh, jungler. Fly jungler. FlyQuest okay. has the two highest KDA junglers. We got, we got best jungler. I yeah. love it. I love it. All right, nicely done. These are okay. much better than Jet stats. <laughs> All right, Kobe, question what number two. Uh, this jungler in 2016, try and remember back, uh, failed his master promos <laughs> 11 <laughs> times in a row. I know. <laughs> I know who it is. 11 <laughs> times in a row. Before I'm trying to judge you I know who it is, this, but I'm going to wait. This can't be me also. I, I mean, hopefully you you're will like, remember. You're like thinking, hopefully wait a second. I was or trying actually, to maybe you would have shoved that out of your rigged. memory. I'm going to say master promos are rigged. Yep. But um, I know who I'm it gonna, is. I'm going to not vote myself. Anyone? I'm, I'm gonna vote Medios, dude. I don't know. These are all Medios. <laughs> You're gonna vote Medios. Yeah. Who do you want? I'm gonna vote not Medios. No, but not Medios is you a can't safe. take the field. Safe vote. You I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the man on my far left, Kobe himself. <laughs> is Kobe? I'm it's gonna Kobe. accept both those answers. Ah. Not Medios and Kobe. He I did. Was right. And, and those he did actually get it. But he what did not. not. <laughs> he failed his master's promos 11 times. This was a very tenuous time in the office. You didn't want to approach Kobe in the office during this time because every the world was falling apart as he couldn't reach masters. With Probably the, the most tilted through. I've ever been in my entire life. I've been playing enough Shaco. Uh, I was not playing enough Shaco. There it was all by at the time. Oh, all right, question mistake. number three, Kobe. What do you got for us? Our final question here. I decided to switch it up because you may have uh, discovered a pattern in Kobe's stats. <laughs> this is very jungle heavy. This is going to be different here. Okay, uh, new look here. This animal throws up every time that they eat solid food. Is this going to tie into the game at all? Is it a snake? Like, is this like a, another champion Snake. that we should be aware no, Mark. of? No, this, this is, is a test fly. of knowledge. Nothing about B, me. jellyfish, C, fly, wants us or to be D, cultured, worldly individuals. West African fruit Unlike Jat, who wants us to be narrow-minded, is... focused, stat M. I need an answer. Fruit bat. They're, fruit they're bat. pressing me Sounds here. good. This is unfair. Why do you like poop or throw up every time they land on something, right? I thought snakes ate it and they just sat on Jellyfish don't eat solid foods. They just float around. So it's either snake or fruit bat. I'm going to go fruit, fruit bat. Medios go and see. You guys both go and I'm going to go fruit yeah. bat. Yeah. Fruit bat. Medios is correct again. Yes. Two oh, for three two here three, for Two for three. Three for three. Oh, you got for the three. Medios right, 100% on Kobe stats. I guess I'm always good at good you You're the winner. Right. Lower third. We are running out of time here, so two minutes left on the clock. I want to get predictions for the entire day from all three of you. Boom! There they are. Oh, Jack, again, sliding in his predictions, always even though he's not in. here. He's got to find Whoa. the Whoa! Okay. You Nobody else studies. predicts 100 things We got to the win. Fly Quest Faith here in game two. Uh, explain yourselves, Mark and Medios. Blue side, blue please, side. Please, for the love of God, <laughs> just ban the funnel. You ban saw the it work. Funnel. I 
I have to say FlyQuest, you know, I've worked with both teams and I think FlyQuest might look a little better now. I do think Funnel is Hunter Thieves' best strategy. If FlyQuest is able to deny that, I think they'll have a good shot. So the blue side advantage there. The only other one I'm looking at is TSM Clutch Gaming, where we're split across the board. What are we thinking? What are What is our reasoning there, Kobe? A lot of people are really down on TSM right now, but I think that's because they came in with super high expectations mm. uh, and they, they've been disappointed compared to where they're used to seeing TSM at. And I don't think that they're going to make as big of a mistake as, as we've seen earlier in the split. So then what's in the case game. for Clutch? Oh, well, you had TSM too, yeah. sorry. A couple things. First of all, I think Clutch has proven to be super effective against TSM. Uh, you know, counter Pokemon types. And <laughs> classic. Clutch is blue side. It's hard to vote against blue side. It's that blue side advantage. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to kick it out to the battle arena to get us into game one.